Welcome everyone. In this video, I want to show you how to add AI to your code using the OpenAI GPT APIs. I did just release a course on OpenAI APIs yesterday. Um, it has tons of really cool projects. I had a blast making it. There's a link in the description of the coupon if you're interested. So most of you, I'm assuming, are familiar with ChatGPT, the web-based client where we can interact with GPT-3, 3.5, or GPT-4, depending on if you uh, pay extra money to have access to GPT-4. Well, we also can interact with these models directly via our code, where we can add all sorts of really cool capabilities to our code without having to understand anything about how the AI works. You just need to know how to talk to it. So there's APIs to connect with GPT-3, GPT 3.5, which is not a fully new model, but it's a more finely tuned version of 3, and GPT 4, which is the whole brand new fancy model that just came out last month in beta, or at least with a wait list. GPT, by the way, stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Transformer is the underlying architecture powering the model. So all of these GPT variants are language models that take text as input and continue that text as output, right? Text in and text out. So we can do super simple things like ask it to complete a sentence. The color of the sky is blue. Ask it to tell us a joke or ask it to translate, you know, from English to Korean, for example, or ask it to write code for us, to debug our code, to perform sentiment analysis. There's tons of different applications. Um, it really is just kind of up to your imagination. Now, the first step here is to sign up for an API key if you don't have one already. So you'll need to go to openai.com um, which is actually not the correct location. If you go to openai.com, it takes you to their marketing page and you won't see a sign up button. But if you click any developer page here, it will take you to the other website, platform.openai.com, which is where you want to go to sign up. You'll need to verify an email, put a phone number in, and it will give you an API key. So today I'm going to be working in Python because it's super easy to integrate OpenAI with Python. It also can be done with any language out there. It's just an API that you can connect to, but there's a nice node client for JavaScript and there's a nice popular Python client. So I'm going to be using Python in a Jupyter notebook. So what I've done is installed the client that I'm going to be using, which again, you don't have to do. You can manually make post requests to the correct endpoints. Like this is one of the endpoints but it's much easier to use the client where it's just a matter of calling a method or two. So you'll need to install this client, pip install OpenAI if you're using Python, or if you're gonna try doing it in Node, you'll need to install with NPM, the OpenAI package. When that's done, uh, the first most important thing is setting up your API key. So if you're in a rush and you're just playing around, you can hard code your API key right here. Of course, you don't wanna share that key with anyone, so it's not the best idea. So I'm using a .env file where I'm writing my environment variables. I'm loading that .env file with a package called .env, and then I'm setting that uh, API key on the OpenAI client to be equal to my environment variable. However you do it, we have to provide the API key to the client. Now that we have that done, let's make our first request. So the first thing you really have to know is that there's two different ways that we can make requests. There's two different families of endpoints. You can see this on the documentation. There's a completion endpoint and a chat endpoint. Both of them work with the GPT family of models. There's two different endpoints where we provide text and we get text back out from some GPT model. But there's a significant difference. The completion endpoint is the old way. I don't know if it will ever be deprecated, but it used to be the only option. And it would look something like this if we're using the Python client, openai.completion.create. And we specify a simple prompt. Tell me a joke, translate this sentence, write a function, analyze the sentiment, whatever we want it to do, we give it a single prompt. The newer option though, is to use the chat based format, which expects a full list of messages in basically the format of a conversation. This is new, it was just released in March of 2023. And the reason it really matters is that the chat format is the only option we have to work with GPT-4 and also GPT-3.5 Turbo. So you kind of just want to use the chat format, to be honest, because it gives us access to these other models. Um, and it seems to be the direction that OpenAI is heading. So here's the same exact type of a query, asking for a joke, written using the chat format. Instead of a single prompt, we provide a list of messages. And the message has some content, tell me a joke. So why don't we take a look at trying this for real? In this notebook, again, I'm using the Python client. I'm gonna do openai.chatcompletion.create. And then we have to specify a model. 
Now, we don't really have time to talk about all the different flavors of models and how they compare and pricing and tokens, but just know if you have access to GPT-4, it's the most expensive. It also tends to be the slowest. So I'm gonna use GPT-3.5 Turbo just to start. I'll show you that GPT-4 works too. Turbo is very quick, uh, but it's also very cheap. But in a lot of cases, it's completely indistinguishable from GPT-4 for simple queries. So the next step is we provide a list of messages. So it has to be a list. I have some rules written out here. A list of objects, or in Python, what you would call a dictionary, where each object has a role. Who is the message coming from? Remember, it's supposed to represent a conversation. So I'll talk more about this in a moment. But most importantly, each message also has to have the message content. So I'm going to start by adding a single message in here. I'll just ask it to um, maybe write me a function in Python. So I'm going to set the role to be user. And then I'm going to set the content to be write a Python function to convert, let's say, Fahrenheit to Celsius. I'll do F to C because I don't want to spell Fahrenheit. <laughs> uh, and that's all we need to do. This will give me a response back. And it looks like... I never ran my API key. There we go. <laughs> it didn't have the API key set up. Okay, I got my response back. First of all, you can see in here, this is the actual text that it continued for me based on the prompt that I gave it in the form of messages. Further down though, we have some meta information. Most importantly is this uses, usage area of the response that tells us how many tokens were used in the actual text it completed and in the prompt we provided. And the reason this matters is that this is how we're built. These models don't work with words as we know them in the English language, but instead smaller pieces uh, called tokens that are typically about four characters of English text on average. Here's an example. The sentence, I like hamburgers, is three words, but it's five tokens in the eyes of the GPT family. So each model has a different price per token and OpenAI will bill us based on the total number of tokens in the input plus the total number of tokens in the output. It varies a little bit um, with the messages format. It gets sort of complicated, but here's how the, the pricing shakes down, shakes out. I don't know what the right phrase is there. Uh, so GPT-4 is the most expensive, six to 12 cents per 1,000 tokens. 3.5 turbo, very cheap, $0.002 for 1,000 tokens. So I'm using GPT-4 here. It's 159 tokens. It's a fraction of a fraction of a cent. That's all you need to know for now. Okay, so let's take a look at how we actually access the content out of here. The, the response is inside of choices, and then that gives us a list. I want the zero with choice. There's only one right now. And then I want message. And then specifically, I want content out of there. And I'll print this so we can get our new lines formatted nicely. And here's the function it wrote for me. Uh, let's see if it works. Let's just copy this function and let's call it convert F to C. Let's do a, an, an easy one. 212 Fahrenheit should be 100 Celsius. There we go. So it seems like it's working. Now there's a lot to be said around writing a good prompt and how to control the output because if we're asking it to write code for us, do we really want all this extra text and examples and explanation? Maybe we just want the, the pure code. There's ways of, of telling it exactly what we want it to give us. I'm just showing you how to get any sort of result. Okay, so let's return to the messages format. Remember that in order to use this chat API, which is the only API that supports GPT 3.5 Turbo and GPT 4, we have to provide a list of messages. And the idea is that it represents a conversation between you or the user and the assistant, which is the model, basically GPT 4, the, the chat assistant. So that's what the role attribute or the role property is for. We can set it to be user if it's text coming from us, assistant if we're trying to show it basically an example of a response from the assistant, and then system is used to provide some general overall context. So let me show you a more complicated example. Here's a function I wrote called get tweet sentiment. And I wanna call your attention to the messages list I made first. We start with a system message. Now, a system message is used to give some overall direction to the assistant or to the model. So in this case, my message says, you are a sentiment analysis assistant. Given a text input, respond with the sentiment as either positive, neutral, or negative. So I'm telling it how I want it to behave. Then I continue the conversation with an example. So I probably could have gotten away with no examples, but sometimes it's, sometimes it's very useful to provide an example to specify exactly the format that I want back. So in this case, 
in our conversation, the user role says this tweet. It's a tweet about Frank Ocean, uh, who had a, a controversial performance at Coachella last weekend. And then uh, the assistant responds back. Again, it's not actually responding with this. This is me telling it how I wanted it to respond with the word negative. And then I prompt it again. This time, the user role specifies the content as whatever tweet is passed in. And by building up this simple, just one example, really, uh, I'm telling it exactly how I want it to respond with a single word. Sometimes if you don't provide examples, it might respond with a sentence saying the sentiment is negative. The sentiment is positive. Here I'm telling it, no, I want you to just give me the word negative or positive or neutral. So then I take that list of messages. I pass it off to openai.chatcompletion.create. I'm using GPT-4 this time, and I just return the message content we get back. So here's a positive tweet, Frank Ocean performing Godspeed. I'm so moved. It responds with positive. Here's one that's more neutral. It could have been better, but it wasn't a terrible set either. And it responds with neutral. So that's just a slightly more complex example of how you can use the messages syntax. You can create your own conversation history that uh, gives it some context and informs how it should answer your query. So this was just a super quick introduction, of course. Uh, there's a lot more to working with these models and these APIs. Uh, sentiment analysis is not even the best use case. It's just a very simple example to show you uh, how the conversation mechanism works. And there's just so much you can do with these APIs to enhance your code and, and come up with really cool projects. So if you're interested, I do have a course I just released on working with these APIs. You can find a link in the description. It's on sale, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll be back with some content tomorrow.